Thanks. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. I am so excited that we are in the midst of year three of our Cross Canada virtual road trip with Parks Canada and Canadian Geographic Education. It is underway. Over the next few months, we'll take you coast to coast to coast across Canada as we visit 10 national parks, historic sites, and marine parks. You'll meet amazing outreach specialists and scientists who will take you behind the scenes of these natural wonders with incredible stories and projects. Uh, A little things to think about for today. We've got a great group of students on camera with us. I can see the classes behind the scenes. We'll be taking your questions when the time comes. If you are tuning in live via YouTube, and I can see we have a large group of classrooms there, use the chat sidebar. Let us know where you're watching from, then send us in some questions when the time comes. But after you said hi, save that chat space for uh, Q&A. We don't want to have to mute anybody today. We'll also have a live Kahoot event. I'm going to share the details for that shortly. I will post it in the private chat. I will post it on the comment section on YouTube as well, so you can get ready for that Kahoot action. But before we can have some Kahoot, we have to dive into today's event. So today's event, we are going to explore the colorful and unexpected life of the St. Lawrence. The animals that live under the water surface are less known, but they represent the most numerous, the most unusual, and the most colorful species in the St. Lawrence River. And our guide for today, we have Eve Marie joining us. She's an education officer with Parks Canada. Let's bring her in live with us right now. Hey, Eve Marie. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, good, good. And it's great to have you with us. We had you join us yesterday en France to kick off uh, the first event on our 10 park tour stop journey across Canada. We're really excited to explore uh, in English with you today. Yeah, well, I'm really happy to be uh, here today as well. And thank you for having me. And today I'm with you, as John mentioned, to introduce you to some fascinating animals that live in the St. Lawrence River. But before we dive a little bit more into the subject, let's look at where the Marine Park is located. So the Marine Park is where I work at. So right now you see a, oops, I'm sorry. Okay, right now you see the map of Canada with the Parks Canada Network. So on the green dots, you see national parks. Where the red dots are, those are national historic sites and the blue dots represent marine conservation area. And the marine park where I work at is a marine conservation area. So here is a map with a closer look of the Saguenay St. Lawrence Marine Park. So if you are familiar with the province of Quebec, the marine park is located pretty much at the center between the the cities of Saguenay, Quebec and Rimouski. And on the larger map, you can see in the dark blue area that that is the marine park. So the marine park protects everything that lives in the water from the surface to the seafloor. And the marine park has fresh water coming in from the lakes, rivers, and going through the Atlantic Ocean. And the water found in the marine park is salty like the sea. I'm I'm speaking to you today from Tadoussac in the North Shore region, and we are on the traditional territory of the Inu Isipid First Nation, and I thank them for welcoming us on their land that they called Nithasnan. Let's dive a little bit further into the subject by showing you this map, because most of you have probably already been near a a river, a lake, the St. Lawrence River, or another body of river. Well, it's likely that the water you've seen or touched has traveled to the Saguenay St. Lawrence Marine Park. Let me tell you how. So the map shows Quebec, Ontario, and the Maritime Provinces. The dark green area represents the areas where the water flows downstream from the Great Lakes towards the St. Lawrence River and continuing its way to the Atlantic Ocean, roughly through the same direction as indicated by the arrows on the map. In other words, a drop of water that would fall at point A would eventually reach the ocean at point B. This means that the rain that falls in your area eventually reaches a river, a river, a lake, continues its way to the St. Lawrence River and flows through the Marine Park just in front of Tad Sag, so just in front of where I am today. So in some way, that means that you are connected to the Saguenay St. Lawrence Marine Park by a water um, way near your home. 
You may have already heard about Tadoussac, where I live, and the possibility to see whales when you visit. <clears throat> that is true, that you can see whales, but there are so many other species that live in the marine parks, such as seals, birds, and marine invertebrates. And those species are less known because they live on the sea floor. I'll show you a picture here that shows the, what the bottom of the marine park looks like. Some animals look like flowers, some even look like cauliflower, don't you think? But they're not um, plants, they are in fact animals. And even though these animals can have a strange look, they need to feed, reproduce, protect themselves from predators in order to survive. They have adapted to life in the St. Lawrence River, and I want to tell you about four species that I think are pretty fascinating. Let's start by introducing the northern red anemone. It is indeed an animal, it's not a plant. It has a cylindrical body decorated with a crown of tentacles. A tentacle is what is circled in white on the picture. When fully grown, the anemone is the size of a large peanut butter jar. It kind of looks like this, although it's not made of cardboard. And despite, it, despite its name, the northern red anemone can be yellow, orange, red, and even bluish gray. If we were to touch it, we'd feel that the skin of the anemone is soft and smooth. The northern red anemone can have up to 100 tentacles. The tentacles serve as arms. Since the anemone is attached to the bottom of the water, it cannot move to hunt its prey. It has to wait for its prey to come with our, towards the tentacles in order to catch them. So when an animal passes by an, uh, a tentacle, the, there is a small paralyzing stinger on each um, end of each tentacle that when the prey passes by, the stinger ejects from the uh, tentacle and penetrate the victim's flesh. The latter is quickly paralyzed, then caught by the tentacles, which enter the anemone's mouth with the prey. On this picture, circled in yellow, you can see an anemone that, is, uh, that has his tentacles deployed waiting for a prey to come by. Circled in blue, we see an anemone starting to retract its tentacles and circled in white, we can see the anemone swallowing its prey. It's capable of capturing and swallowing prey such as fish, shrimp, crabs, worms, and even sea stars. The anemones can reproduce in several ways, eh? So male and female anemones reproduce by releasing small reproductive cells called gametes into the water. So these gametes are released and then the, gamete, the gametes can meet and produce an egg that will become a tiny anemone. Another way for the anemone to multiply itself is um, from moving off the bottom of the seafloor. When it moves off, the anemone can uh, leave behind small pieces of its foot that will then grow and become new anemones of their own. It's a way for, to, for anemones to reproduce without needing uh, an anemone of the opposite sex. It can also reproduce by listen carefully, dividing in two, or by lengthening a part of their foot to form another anemone. I know it's a little bit complicated to, to imagine, but that's how they reproduce. Let me now introduce you to a second species that I particularly love that lives in the marine park, and it is the sun star. It's a large sea star that is up to approximately the size of a frisbee, so about 30 centimeters in diameter. In diameter. We call it a sun because it looks like a sun with its many arms. It can have between eight and 14 arms. The spiny, sun, the spiny sun star, for example, can be yellow, orange, red, or brown. And since it likes cold, salty water, the marine park is a dream place for it. So on the image, you can see on the left, a spiny sun star. And on the right, you can see a purple sun star that are two species that we have here in the marine park. Sun star, as beautiful and uh, uh, as they can look, are voracious predators, just like the anemones. They can feed on green sea urchins, mussels, anemones, and even feed on other sea stars. A large sun star could even eat a crab. This is how a sun star would eat a mussel, for example. First, the sun star would cling to the mussel's shell. 
And then using its powerful arms, it pulls the shells apart. This can take up to about 30 seconds. Then the sun star takes out its stomach through its mouth and into the muscle. The stomach then digests the muscle inside the shell. And when it's done, the sun star can re-ingest its stomach and leave the empty shells behind. It's pretty particular, isn't it? The sun star can be either male or female. And once again, the reproductive cells that are called gametes in the water are um, float in the water and they can meet and form a tiny sun star once again. And then the sun star can go cling itself to a rock and feed until it becomes larger and becomes an adult. The sun star has very few predators, eh? Because it's a very uh, ferocious predator. Only crabs and seagulls can weaken a sun star by pinching or pecking it. If the sun star loses an arm as a result of an attack by a predator, its arm will grow back. As you can see on the picture here, there is the center of the sun star with two long arms and kind of three little arms that are growing back. If attacks are frequent on a sun star, it can weaken the sun star to the point of killing it. Let's move now to a third species that I want to present to you today, and it is the crab. This one you may know. A eh? crab is very popular in our plates in the spring, around this time of the year. And when walking on a beach, we can also find crab shells and claws here and there in the sand. There are several species of crab in the marine park. The spider crab, for example, like the one on the left picture, and the common crab, like the one on the illustration, just to name a few. The body of the spider crab, for example, like the one in the picture, is about the size of a grapefruit. But that's without considering its very long legs. It has eight long legs and two claws at the front that, are, that allow it to eat and defend itself. It is generally reddish pink and its shell is very hard and rough. And a crab can live an average of 12 to 14 years. <clears throat> The crab usually feeds on shrimp, fish, sea stars, sea urchins, and dead animals. It uses its claws to catch, shred, and bring food to its mouth. When they're ready to reproduce, this is how it happens. The female crab chooses a partner um, for herself. And during this time, the male protects the female from other males by clinging to her back. This can last up to three weeks. But crab reproduction can be rather ferocious. <clears throat> when the female is ready to lay her eggs, the male can help her disperse the larva by shaking the female with its powerful legs. Sometimes though, the female dies during the, these maneuvers. As for the males, they can fight for a female and injure each other by losing a leg, for example. But like the sun star, a crab can grow back a leg if it is to lose one. For example, he can, a crab can choose to let go of a leg to release itself from a predator and then grow it, grow it back later in, in his life. It's impressive, isn't it? Here is now the already last species that I want to introduce you to today, and it is the blue mussel. This one you may know as well because of the blue shells that we can find on the beach. The shells are left behind by the predators that feed on them. Like the filter of a swimming pool, mussels filter water to feed, and they feed on microscopic algae and other small organisms that float in the water. Here's how the mussel feeds. So on this illustration, you can see two siphons, and that's what uh, the mussel uses to feed. So on the left side of the image, you can see the inhalant siphon. So the mussel draws water inward and the water is filled with microscopic algae and other microorganisms. And then inside his body, he filters, the mussel filters the water and retains all the nutrients. And then when the water is um, all cleared with uh, nutritious values, it is exhaled back with the exhalant siphon. Um, the same way as the anemone, the blue mussel reproduces by releasing male and female gametes into the water, and it can take the form of a white cloud. At the will of currents, the gametes meet and form eggs, which will become small mussels. 
During its growth, the mussel will fix itself to the bottom of the water using sticky threads that come out of its foot. It can then start to feed and grow to its adult size. One of the blue mussel's major predators we saw it earlier is the common sea star or any other sun star or sea star. And the mussel is also the favorite prey of a duck that lives in a marine park that is called the common eider, and we also feed on mussels. Well, I am already done presenting four of the many, many species that live in the marine park, but I found that were interesting to present to you today. I don't know if you noticed, but most of the species that I showed you have several things in common. First of all, they all enjoy the same habitat, the same living environment, so the same home, if you will. The very cold and salt water of the marine park. They are all exposed to really strong currents, and they live in a depth between zero and 300 meters below the surface. And you may have also noticed that many of the species that I presented today eat, eat one another. Another point uh, in common that these animals have is that they do not have a spine. They're, all these animals are grouped under the term invertebrate. As we can see in the image on the left, we can see the skeleton of a fish. We can see its skull, its spine, its bones, and this bones, the uh, the ribs, sorry, looks look like kind of like our, our ribs, sorry. And uh, it's like us, they're vertebrates. So we also have bones in our fingers, we have a spine, we have um, many bones in our body, contrarily to anemones and sea stars and mussels, which do not have bones in their bodies and do not have a skeleton. So that is why they are called invertebrates, as we can see on the image on the right. The invertebrates are the most numerous category of animals in the marine park, with over 1,000 different species listed in the marine park. And yet we know, we know a lot more about birds, um, fish, and whales. Out of the 1,420 species in the marine park, 1,000 of them are marine invertebrates. It's pretty impressive. And every species in the marine park has an important role to play in maintaining the balance of the St. Lawrence River. So whether it is the blue whale, which is the largest animal on earth, or a microscopic algae, they're both as important for the, main for the maintenance of the balance in the St. Lawrence River. The image you see on your screen illustrates the food chain. We can see that anemones, crabs, and sea urchin feed on what is called zooplankton, for example. Those invertebrates can then be eaten by birds, and the zooplankton also serves as food as to small fish and whales, and the small fish are then eaten by birds, larger fish, seals, belugas, and other whales. So you can see how every species is linked to one another, and that is why it's very important to maintain the equilibrium of the St. Lawrence River. Well, I'm now done with the presentation. Thank you a lot for listening. And I just want you to remember one thing is that the St. Lawrence's biodiversity is impressive, but very fragile. And all species, as I mentioned earlier, both large and small are important to the balance of the life of the St. Lawrence River. And if you recall, I told you about a, drip, a drop of rain that falls near your home that flows into a stream, a lake, a river, and then flows through the St. Lawrence and the Marine Park. Well, just like a raindrop, plastic waste can end up in the Marine Park and therefore in the habitat of marine animals. But you can help protect marine species by making sure you never litter and by reducing the use of plastic in your daily life. Because every action that you take can have an impact on a water stream near, near your home and eventually on the marine park here. So thanks a lot for helping and ensuring that we have a clean environment and uh, I'll be ready to take some of your questions. All right, Eve Marie, thank you for that great presentation and taking yeah. us below the surface of the St. Lawrence. Uh -huh. It is an absolutely incredible uh, environment and much too understudied. And most of us don't get to see it unless you're maybe a scuba diver or a snorkeler. Indeed, yeah, it is very impressive. And I encourage all of you to visit the area here and learn more about them. All right, well, as promised, we are gonna to get to a little bit of Kahoot action. I have shared the link uh, in 
the chat, but I'm going to share it here again with a banner, and then I will go right to the page so we can all see what we're talking about here. So here is what you need to do. You need to head to kahoot.it, and then it's going to ask you for a PIN number. Uh, put in the PIN number here, 205-2642. I'm also going to share my screen, and you're going to get to see it front and center there as well. So here we go. I can see we already have some students who have started to join, which is great. And there's multiple ways you can join. If you have one-to-one -one technology at your seat, you, like a Chromebook, maybe a tablet, you can join right there. If not, your teacher could put this up at the front of the room and you could shout out your answers to him or her. If you have a tablet or if you have a uh, mobile phone, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you right into your spot. We can see that we have a lot of animal names being generated for us, like the purple lobster, uh, a nice invertebrate there. We've got the space emu, the power eagle. So lots of cool names coming in. We'll give it another few moments here because it looks like we're just getting going with the students joining us. Um, Eve Marie, how long have you worked with uh, the Marine Park? I have, my first working experience was as a student six years ago. And then I finished my bachelor's degree and then I got a real adult job here. So I've been working in this position for a year now. All right. And I have to ask the question as a scuba diver myself, uh, are you a scuba diver? Do you ever get out into the park? I have, but only, um, how do you call it? Like snorkeling? Snorkeling. Yes. Yeah. Oh, but you have to come diving here. It's, it's one of the most renowned places to dive. Uh, in Quebec and one of the most like um, cold water diving mm -hmm. that's one of the places to cold water dive and as you saw the bottom of the St. Lawrence is so colorful and it's recovered by an algae most of the places that is pink so oh. all of the bottom of the St. Lawrence River is pink it is absolutely beautiful all right well that sounds like something worth checking out oh yeah uh, yeah I do a lot of shipwreck diving in the Great Lakes so I get to see a lot of Cold wow, water yeah. diving, a lot of shipwrecks, but that life out there sounds pretty, pretty enticing, appealing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is. All right, well, we still aren't slowing down here yet. So I'm gonna <laughs> give it another maybe 30 seconds to make sure we get a few more students, uh, a few more classrooms locked in here with us. Reminder, if you are tuning in live via YouTube, now's the time to start sending your questions in via the chat. I can see we've got classrooms saying hi here from Kitchener, Ontario, Davidson, Saskatchewan, Langley, British Columbia. Uh, where else? Do, ooh, we've got a classroom here uh, on the banks of the St. Lawrence. Some grade six is hanging out with us. We've got uh, Barry's Bay, looks like grade seven and eight. So lots of classrooms hanging out with us right now. Get those questions ready. And lucky for us, we have one while we wait for another moment here. Uh, Tizana is joining us and would like to know are there sharks in the St. Lawrence? There are sharks in the St. Lawrence. There are eight different species of, of sharks in the St. Lawrence. They mostly live near the Gulf of the St. Lawrence, but some of them visit the Marine Park here. Oh, I do not know the word, the names in English that much though. But we do have the great white shark <clears throat> that visits here. The Groenland shark. Oh, the Greenland, yeah. Greenland shark, yeah, if I translate it from French. There are uh, dogfish sharks, and those are the names I know in English. <laughs> All right, Greenland sharks are so cool. Scientists think they can live up to 300 or more years old in that yes. cold, deep water. They're so slow growing. That's pretty exactly. wild. Exactly, and they I, I know that some places here, uh, notably the fjord of the Saguenay here, um, we have a couple Greenland sharks that have been spotted, but they mostly live in really, really big depths. So they're really not easy to spot. So only like very professional divers can see them. All right. There's some classes in North Carolina and South Carolina saying hi. So we have some oh, students across the border today. Yeah. Uh, sunny Vancouver. Um, and so... Great. Uh, what's this one? Thetford Mines, some grade fives. So a question here from those grade fives, are those star, those those sea stars, are they venomous? Um, they're not per se, but if you were to touch them, they recommend not to touch your face or your eyes afterwards because it can be irritating to the skin, but yep. they're not like venomous, 
per se. Okay. Well, yeah. I think we should get this started. I know right. that uh, there's still students trickling in, but I think we should get it going so we can really get into our Q&A yeah. uh, round proper. So here we go. 20 seconds for each question. Get it right, you get points. The faster you get it in, the more points you're going to get. So here we go. Counting us in with a three second, three, two, one. And we have a multiple choice to start. How many tentacles does the Northern red anemone have? Is it 40, 70, 100, or as many as 200 tentacles? How many tentacles do those Northern red anemone have? You have about five seconds to lock in your answer. And we will see where we are. Okay, a little bit of a split, but most went with 100, which is the correct answer. Let's look at our leaderboard, the lucky squid. We've got another invertebrate in there representing. All right, let's jump into our next question. This is another multiple choice. How many known species are there uh, in the Saguenay St. Lawrence Marine Park? I mentioned it, I mentioned it pretty quickly, but Yeah, you have to be sharp. <laughs> <laughs> For this one, is it 370, uh, 1,490, 890, or 2,200? Okay, they did it. Most students yeah, went with 1,490. And I like how we included known in there because the yes. oceans are one of the areas that we need to do a lot more exploration. And there Indeed. are still a lot of species to be found. Yes. So the Radiant Panther has snagged that top spot with the wise dolphin in hot pursuit. Dolphins, what about dolphins? Are there dolphins in the marine park? There are dolphins. Um, they're not residents, nor are they regular visitors, but they do visit two different um, types of dolphins. Go to the next answer uh, question and I'll find the names in English. All right, perfect. So our final question here, this is going to settle things. Why is the sun sea called sun? Why does it have sun in its name? Does it produce light? Is it yellow orange? Does it sparkle in the water? Does it resemble the sun in its shape? Or all of those things? Can it do all of those crazy things? Which one do you think it is? Is it producing light? Is it yellow orange? Does it sparkle in the water? Does it resemble the sun? Or do you just want to roll the dice and say, yeah, it does every one of those things. A couple more seconds. Ooh, we had a good split there, but 77 students went with because it resembles the sun in its shape. And that is absolutely correct. Yes. Our final podium. Let's take a look here. In third place, the glowing turtle. In second, the power eagle. And taking that top spot, the coveted first the hero boa sneaking in at the end to take it. All right. Great job, students. Thank you so much for joining some Kahoot. We'll go to some Q&A action now, but uh, Eve Marie, were you able to find the dolphin names? Only one of them. Um, so in French, we have Dauphin à flanc blanc and Dauphin à nez blanc. So one of them is the Atlantic white-sided dolphin. And the other one, if I translate it word for word, is the white beaked dolphin but it's not the it's not the right name but it's uh, all right. roughly translated that's what it is yeah all right very very cool so let's go to some q a action if you are yeah. on youtube keep that chat sidebar going for us and get us some questions but let's start off with some of our camera groups so we need to visit mr s class first they are in windsor ontario joining us looks like some grade six to eight students let's get them in front and center all right mr s crew how are we doing today how are we doing? Good. Good. Awesome. Uh, we have a couple of questions, but we'll start. I'll have Riley come on up and he can ask. Sounds good. Hi, my name is Riley. I was just wondering like what the biggest whale was in the world. The biggest whale in the world and it's the blue whale and it's actually the biggest animal that we have ever uh, known to live on planet Earth. It is the blue whale. Yeah. And we can see it here. Wow, that's pretty big. It's pretty big. It can measure up to 30 meters long. So that's about, I think, three school buses. Wow. Yeah, 
something like that. Two or three. Yep. Well, thanks for answering my question. Thank you. All right. You want to sneak another one in, Mr. F? If you don't mind, one more. Here's Naraya. Hi. My name is Naraya, and my question is if um, there's any hammerhead sharks there. Hammerhead sharks. What is that one in French? I am not sure. I can Google it really quickly. Yeah, they've got that really unique head, the, yeah, the yeah. foil. I think we do not. Yeah, I think, um, yes, we do. Yes, we do have them. <laughs> it go. is one Very of the cool. eight species in the St. Lawrence that we can spot. Thank you for answering my question. Oh, Thank you for your question. question. All right, let's go to another camera classroom here. Let us bring in Miss Carson's crew. Grade seven and eights. They are, looks like they are in Cambria. Is that right? Oh no, Cambridge. Got to stretch that out there. There we go. Let's bring them in front and center. Hey, Cambridge, how are we doing today? Hi. Great. Thank you. Oh. There they are. There they are. All right. Who's got a question? Do we have a question? I'm not hearing any questions here, but we're really loving the show. Thanks very much. All Thank right. You. I will come back. If you change your mind, there's the private chat. Send me a message there. Great. Thank you. All right. So let's check YouTube because I can see a bunch more comments have come in yeah. here. So before we go to another camera classroom, uh, let's start off here. Some of these are very specific, but let's start off with Miss Smith me. class would like to know about a really rare or is there something that's really rare in the marine park? So I got asked that question yesterday and I, I mean, there are for sure really rare known species, but out of the almost 1,500 species that there are, um, I'll tell you about the one that I find the most mysterious. Um, it's called an Atlantic wolf. It's a uh, fish that has a pretty funny face if you Google it. It's often hidden in small caves and looks at you like it's wondering what you're doing. So I think that is the most curious and mysterious species in the marine park. All right, sounds pretty cool. We're gonna come back to YouTube in just a minute and take some more questions. But let us go to uh, Miss Craig's crew. Looks like some third and fourth graders. Let's find the right spot. There it is. Oh, no, second and third graders. There we go. Hi, my name's Abraham. Hi. My question is, are there any species that are in endangered in your marine park? In your marine park, what are they and why are they in danger? Thank you so much for your question. Yes, indeed, there are several endangered species in the marine park. The one that we know most about is the beluga whale. So it is our a keystone species in the marine park. And um, since it is, we, we see it a lot, so we can uh, know about their, uh, their whereabouts with the population. And it is endangered because it was massively hunted many, many, many decades ago. Um, but now so much effort is put into its, uh, its well-being and its health. So we're trying to keep the population up. So that is one of the endangered species. There are different birds, different uh, fish that are endangered as well. And most of them um, are endangered due to pollution, um, lack of food resources, and different um, challenges like that. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you for your question. All right. Do you have one more on deck or do you want us to check back in a bit? We do have one more on deck. We've got a bunch, but we'll have Go ahead. Come All on. right. Emily, stand up. My name is Emily. My question is, what is the most popular speedy? What do you ever release any speedies outside of the marine park? Why, when, or why not? Um, so the marine park is an open space, so mar um, marine species are not um, 
contained to the marine park. They come as go and go as they please. So the concept is just that this specific area is protected. And so there are regulations and this is where we study them, but they can go anywhere and everywhere. Fun fact, most whales that come here um, in the summertime to feed, in the wintertime, some of those whales travel to the Arctic, to Europe, to the Bermudas uh, to reproduce. So they are big, big, big travelers. Some birds travel down to South America, some birds travel to South Africa. So they're big travelers. Answering my question. Thank you. All right, great questions. Let us go and grab one more camera classroom and then we'll head back to YouTube. We've got some fourth and fifth graders in Toronto uh, with Miss Rockstool. Let's bring them in here. There we go. Hi, I'm Shannon. How big is the area of the marine park? Oh, it's really big. It's it's 1,045 meters. I don't know if I have a comparison. If I were to compare it to the size of Montreal, <laughs> the island of Montreal, I think it's mm, it's about that size of the island of Montreal. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you for your question. All right, fourth fifth grade, you got another one there? We have it's, more. It's actually three times the size of the island of Montreal. <laughs> Um, my name is Rashita. What is the second and third biggest underwater animal? Oh, biggest animal underwater. Well, actually, we can, fish is, uh, is a invertebrate, and the tuna is the one of the biggest fishes that we have here. Um, other than that, the Greenland shark, as we mentioned earlier, is also a fish and an underwater species, and uh, it is one of the biggest ones in the marine park. All right. Favorite um, underwater animal? Underwater animal, yeah. Well, that I, it would still uh, remain the, the Greenland shark. She was asking your favorite. Oh, my favorite. Oh. Oh, um... So unfortunately, I cannot show you an image, but it is called a um, water raspberry, <laughs> if I translate it from French. And it really looks like a red, pink, super colorful um, underwater strawberry. It's really big um, and it is pink. And I think pink is a beautiful color. So I think that's my favorite um, underwater animal. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ms. Pinkham, I saw you pop in backstage. It looked like you got your camera on. If you do have a question there, pop in again, uh, and I'll make sure I bring your crew in. But while we wait to see what happens, I'm going to grab another question here from YouTube. Um, okay. Blue whales. Grade 7, 8 class want to know. They've seen them feed before. They come up. They take that big mouthful. How do they get that water out when they're trying to eat their food? All right. Well, that's really simple. So... Blue whales have um, um, it, it have a, a, a mechanism where they can take up to 300% the size of their stomachs full of water. And so when their mouth is full, then with their tongue, they just blow out the water. So they push out the water with their tongues and as teeth, it is not teeth that they have in their mouths, it, it is called baleens. And the baleens, baleens, I think, yeah, baleens, and it, it, it is used like a filter. So all of the food is retained in the whale's filter, so the baleens, and the water can just be pushed out and the food is retained in its mouth. All right. Good explanation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mrs. Carson's crew in Cambridge sent me a message. They say they've got a question, so we're going to head back to them and see what we've got. What do they got for us? Hi, I have Gabe who wants to ask you a question. Okay, hi. I just wanted to know what, what, what's the fastest fish in the marine park that you know of? The fastest fish that I know of? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I do not know that answer. The fastest fish. I'm not a, a big connoisseur of fish, unfortunately, but I know that salmons and trouts are really, really um, 
fast swimmers. So that's the answer I can give you today. <laughs> Thank you. So sailfish are some of the fastest fish in the ocean. Do you get any sailfish in the park? Ooh, um, sailfish. The kind of with the big kind of like, oh, like swordfish, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like kind of swordfish. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, good question. Uh, okay, let's wrap up with one or two more from YouTube and then we'll do yeah. a big shout out goodbye to all of our classrooms. Yeah. Um, oh, this is a good one. Climate change, right? Temperature mm -hmm. of water is changing. Are you yeah. seeing anything where warmer temperatures are maybe affecting the life in the park? Um, so far, so we do a, um, a uh, monitoring of the preys. So of the, the schools of fish, we do monitoring of that. But right now, the biggest impact of uh, climate change that we know of is that the oxygen levels in the St. Lawrence are lowering down, which means that uh, some, um, some phytoplankton is, um, some, some stocks of uh, phytoplankton are lower than they used to be. So that eventually might affect um, the zooplankton and other fish stocks and stuff like that. But right now, the main uh, impact that we know of is reduced oxygen in the St. Lawrence. All right. Well, Eve Marie, thank you so much for taking us into this incredible world, a world rich in strange and colorful species, many of them without backbones, which is pretty darn cool, those inverts. Yeah. Uh, you've definitely sparked my interest in making a trip out there to do a little bit of diving. Great. I want to remind all the educators and students tuning in that there are lots more trips to come as we make our way across Canada, coast to coast to coast, visiting the different historic sites, national parks, marine parks. So if you visit our website, exploringbytheseat.com backslash road trip, you will find the website, all the events coming up and how you can register to grab a camera spot. Maybe you want to tune in live via YouTube. Maybe you want to watch the event afterwards if you can't make it live. To our classrooms, we love having you on YouTube. Thank you for playing Kahoot. Thanks for sending in all those great questions. To our camera classrooms, here they are. A big wave from some of our camera classrooms. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us live today. We love your question. Very, very cool. Eve Marie, thank you so much. Uh, and we cannot wait to continue our cross Canada virtual yeah. road trip. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank Have a you. great Have a nice trip uh, across Canada of the week. You too.